continuity is a topic that I think you've seen before. And you already have a sense of what it really means. You know that a function is continuous if it basically has a nice smooth graph, right? Polynomials are continuous everywhere. And if you think about it, they always have nice smooth looking graphs. The problems happen when there's some kind of jump in the graph or gap or a hole in the graph or something like that. And that's what that formal definition is all about. What I want to show you in these examples is uh, three particular functions that I think illustrate what to look for when you're applying the rules in the section. So there's a nice set of rules that you'll find on uh, page 158 about how to determine where functions are continuous. And I'm going to go ahead and state this. Anytime I give you a problem asking you where functions are continuous, I'm going to certainly want my answer uh, or your answer to be in interval notation. So make sure that you're familiar with that. Practice that on the online homework. And I'll use that in my examples too. All right, so we're starting off with a function we've worked with quite a bit in this section, which is a rational uh, function. And uh, in this particular example, you're going to notice some themes like what we've been talking about before. So if I look at theorem 1 on page 158, it says a rational function is continuous for all x except those values that make the denominator 0. In other words, we're kind of thinking along the same lines as when we were dealing with vertical asymptotes. So if the denominator is 0, then either we have a hole in the graph like we've seen before or we have an asymptote going on, and that would be a discontinuity. So when I say determine where the function is continuous, we're going to figure out where it's not continuous and then leave those points out. And so this is actually a function that I believe we worked with before. And I'm going to look at the denominator and set it equal to 0 and see where the problem points are. So x squared minus 9 equals 0. As we did before, I can say x squared equals 9. And so x would equal plus or minus the square root of 9 which is 3. So we have two problem points, positive 3 and negative 3. Now I don't have to check those with the numerator because I'm not worried about what it is. Is it a hole in the graph? Is it an asymptote? I just know that these are going to be discontinuities. So my graph is continuous everywhere except for positive 3 and except for negative 3. So how do I write that down in interval notation? Well I'm going to go from left to right. So the farthest left I can be is minus infinity. Okay. And then up to the next number I would hit is negative 3, but I don't want to include negative 3. But I want to include everything as close to negative 3 as I can get. So negative 3.1111 should be in there. So that's why I'm writing down negative 3, but I'm putting an open bracket here to say we're not including the actual point negative 3, just everything up to negative 3. Then I put a union symbol, which means combined with, and I say, okay, the next value that I want to get rid of is positive 3, but I want everything in between, right? There's a lot of points in between negative 3 and positive 3. So this would be from everything after negative 3, not including, so that's why I got a cur uh, curved bracket here, minus 3 up to a positive 3. But I don't want to include the positive 3, which again, knows regular parentheses. Now there's still numbers after 3, so this would be union, 3 out, to infinity. The only points not included here are the 3 and the minus 3. So this function is continuous on these intervals. Again, this interval notation is very important to practice. We'll be using this in other settings. So the way I think about this is where will my function break? The way rational functions break is when you're dividing by 0. So just as before, I have a rational function, so I'm going to say, well, where is x squared plus 1 equals 0? Okay, well, that'd be wherever x squared equals negative 1. Hmm, but wait a second. There are no real numbers like this. That'd be x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which if you remember from uh, algebra is plus or minus i. Now, you don't have to know that. You should just know that this is not a real number. We are only concerned about uh, where functions are continuous as far as real numbers go. So this is not something that gives us any information as far as uh, discontinuities. What this is actually telling me is that there are no real numbers that make the denominator equal to zero. That means that there's no place this function breaks. So that tells me that this function is continuous from minus infinity to infinity.
continuing with this concept of functions break in some way, and that's what, what it seems like when we're looking at a discontinuity. When we take an even root of something that's negative, we end up with uh, an imaginary number. And we're concerned with real numbers only. So if I look at uh, the theorem on page 158, it says when I have an even root, which I have here, this is a square root, then the function is going to be continuous wherever the inside function is continuous and non-negative. So essentially, like in this example, I'm saying, okay, where is 10 minus x continuous? Now that's a polynomial, so it's continuous everywhere. So 10 minus x. And where is it non-negative? That means greater than or equal to zero. And so I end up with an inequality to solve. All right, so I'm going to solve this and see what information we get. So I get minus x is greater than or equal to minus 10. I'm going to divide by negative 1 on both sides, so I get x is less than or equal to positive 10. So this is telling me that whenever x is less than or equal to 10, 10 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. So in other words, whenever this is true, I can say this function is non-negative. That means that this is defining where the function is continuous. And so I'm going to write this down in interval notation. And so this is everything smaller than 10, right? Everything smaller than 10, so minus, minus 100 even. Everything smaller than 10. So I want to start at minus infinity. And then I want to come up to 10. Because 10 is okay, because when I plug 10 in, I get the square root of 0. The square root of 0 is just 0. So I want to include the 10. So unlike before where I was putting parentheses, I want to put a square bracket to say, hey, this is my fin minus infinity up to 10, including the 10. And that can be seen here because it's non-negative at the start, meaning I have it equals here. And so this ends up being where this function is continuous. Now, if this was a cube root, this would be slightly different because cube roots behave a little bit different, or a fifth root. For the odd roots, I can use a theorem and it says it's continuous wherever the function inside is continuous. So in this case, wherever this is continuous, which is everywhere, if this was a cube root, it would be minus infinity to infinity. It's because it's a square root, an even root, that I have to do this uh, type of analysis. So big change, I'm including a value here, and that's something to pay attention to.